Hello guys, how are you doing today? Ready for some new stories I prepared for you today? Let's go to the first one, about OP's fiancé, who doesn't want to invite his sister-in-law to their wedding because he thinks she's in love with him. Well, she's your brother's wife, OP. Anyway, OP was shocked to find out that it is not the real reason her fiancé doesn't want his sister-in-law at their wedding. Listen to the story to find out, and of course, to hear my insights on the story. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My fiancé, Will, has a younger brother, Charlie, 34 male, and he is married to Evie, 33 female. Evie is a beautiful woman, both inside and out. She is one of the nicest people I've ever met and is an amazing and supportive friend, perhaps the best friend I've ever had. Will, Charlie, and Evie went to school together. Charlie and Evie have been together for 20 years. They married pretty much straight out of high school. During their time at school, Will and Evie went on one date before she started dating Charlie. Will had been hounding her for a date, and she eventually said yes to try and make Charlie jealous as she liked him, but didn't think he felt the same way. Yes, completely aware this is ridiculous, but Evie was 13 at the time. Evie told me about this date pretty early on. She had wanted me to know in case I thought she had feelings for Will. She made it very clear that she's never had romantic feelings for Will and that she used him for that one date to make Charlie jealous. I do know that Will had feelings for Evie, and from what he said, that he stopped having them since we've been together. Will and I are currently in the process of planning our wedding for next summer. We've been putting together a list of who we want to ask to be a part of the wedding party, and who we want to invite to the wedding. I want to have Evie as one of my bridesmaids, because I know she will be supportive and reliable. Will frowned and told me that he wasn't planning on Evie being a part of the wedding. I asked him if he had a falling out with Charlie and wasn't inviting him either, as they're a package deal as a married couple. Plus, there is no way one would attend without the other. He replied that he hadn't fallen out with his brother, but he couldn't see himself getting married with Evie there as according to him, she still has feelings for him, and he wouldn't want her to ruin our day. I know for a fact that she doesn't. I asked him if she had confessed feelings or something. He said no, but it's the way she is with him. He gave examples like how she's always around our house. Evie and I run together three times a week. As I live closer to her work, she comes to ours to change instead of going home. How she'll make his favorite dessert when we celebrate Christmas at theirs. His birthday is Christmas Eve. How she does little thoughtful things like dropping off baked goods for us, or how she takes an interest in things he is interested in. The three of them support the same football team. To me, none of this is Evie showing she has romantic feelings for him. She's just being a good friend. I told him this, but he is insistent on not inviting Evie to the wedding. I know that if Evie isn't invited, Charlie won't attend, and it will snowball further as the family are really close, but it will look like I'm the one causing this. I reached out to Evie after the conversation with Will, and I asked her to be honest with me if she had any sort of romantic feelings for Will. At first, Evie laughed at the idea of her having any sort of feelings for Will. Then she admitted that until I met Will, he had made her uncomfortable, but it had lessened since we got together two years ago. She explained that Will would make comments about how they were more suited than her and Charlie. He used to send her drunk messages about how they belonged together. She told me that Charlie knew about the messages, and they had pulled themselves away from Will during that period, but only allowed him back in when I started dating him. I asked her if he had sent her anything like that since we'd been together. Evie went quiet on the phone before saying that he had sent her a message at the weekend when Will, Charlie, and some of their friends had gone out drinking. She had canceled on running this week, but hadn't given me a reason, and it turns out that she is avoiding Charlie. Charlie also hasn't been talking to his brother since the night out because of the message. She sent me the message, and it was very explicit. He told her that he wished he was the father of her child. Evie's pregnant with their fourth child, and not Charlie, and how he'd be a better dad than Charlie could ever be. I'm not sure what to do. I love Will, and he is convinced that Evie has feelings for him when she's made it clear that she does not. I thought Will had moved on, but he's now sending Evie messages. Is there anything I can do, or is the relationship just doomed? I really don't understand what OP is thinking. Her fiancé is in love with another woman. Why the hell does she still want to marry him? She doesn't respect herself, and he will never respect her because of that. OP deserves to be in the first place, as all the women do. She should not settle down for crumbles. I personally think this can't be fixed. He also forgets that she is his brother's wife. OP needs to run as fast as she can. Let's see if the community agrees with me. Basis Comprehensive 57 says, 
Your fiancé is obsessed over another woman, to the point he outright told her he wished he was the father of her children, and you don't want to say anything because it may start a fight? OP, you're his placeholder. If Evie did not have a husband, or they divorced, he will go for her. This relationship is doomed. WPNSC says, Why would you marry someone who is in love with someone else? You are the backup plan. If he ever sees that he has a chance with his sister-in-law, he will drop you faster than a hot-baked potato. Do you really want this man to be the father of your children when he would rather Evie be the mother? Beautiful Story 2811 says, Run for your life. Please do not marry this man. There's no saving this. He is obsessed with your sister-in-law, and that is not going to change in the foreseeable future. They had one date 23 years ago, and he's still drunk texting her. This will not end well for you, and frankly, I'm concerned for Evie. Honey, there is no saving this. Edit. Not that it makes anything better. Will was 15 when they had the date. Evie is six months younger than her husband. She's 34 next month. I've told Will that we need to talk when he comes back from taking his mom to an appointment this morning. It's nothing serious, just taking her to get new glasses, but she needs the help as she's got mobility issues. I think he knows I want to talk about Evie, as he asked if it was about Evie and the wedding. I said yes, and he sighed before telling me we would discuss it when he comes back. I'm going to put together a weekend bag so I can leave quickly if needed. I've texted Evie and Charlie to tell them I'm going to talk to Will about his behavior because it needs to change and he needs to realize that nothing will ever happen with Evie. Charlie responded wishing me luck and has said their house is open to me if I need it. He also apologized for me having to go through this as they shouldn't have stuck their heads in the sand about this hoping it would go away. I know I should have brought this up after she told me, but I'm very non-confrontational and will try to avoid an argument if I can. Update. Will and I had a talk when he came back. I told him that I knew about the text he had sent Evie at the weekend. He denied it straight away, telling me she was a fantasist, but quickly changed his tune once I started reading him the text. He then started to apologize and claimed it was a moment of weakness after Charlie had been showing the group pictures from their holiday last month. One of them had made a comment about Evie being out of Charlie's league, which reminded Will that he had lost his chance with Evie all those years ago. He then sent her the text. I asked him how he would feel if it had been Charlie harassing his partner, and he just lowered his head and said he would be upset, but that Charlie didn't deserve Evie. I told him that Evie wasn't an object to be given to whomever is deemed worthy of her, and that she chose Charlie, and that should have been enough for him. The fact there is someone out there who loves Charlie for who he is, and makes his brother happy should be enough. Will told me that he was jealous of Charlie, as he has everything he wanted, and it wasn't fair because he's the eldest. Charlie did better than Will in school. He was better at sports. Charlie is more successful as he was able to do what he wanted. Will feels that he had to do what his parents expected, while Charlie could go to uni for whatever he wanted. Seeing Evie with Charlie is a reminder that Charlie has everything he wants. I asked Will if Evie was single and interested in him, would he leave me? Will refused to answer the question, but it was all I needed to hear. I told Will that I was going to stay elsewhere for a couple days while I figure out where I will go, because we are over. I don't want to stay living with someone who doesn't care about me. When I went to go get the bag I packed, Will asked me if he could have the ring back as it is a family heirloom. It belonged to his gran and was intended for whoever got married first, but when Charlie asked for it, Will apparently threw a massive tantrum over it saying that it should be his as he is the eldest, so their mom said Charlie couldn't have it. I told him no, it was going to the person who it was meant to go to, Evie. I'm now at Charlie and Evie's for a couple days while I figure out getting a new place to stay, or if I will move closer to my family. I work for myself, so that makes things easier. Charlie and Evie have decided they will be going low contact with Will. They'd go no contact, but it will cause drama with the family, and neither want that, especially Evie. Will called Charlie asking if I was with them, but Charlie told Will that he had no idea where I am. Charlie then proceeded to tell Will that they are going low contact with him because of the way Will has been towards Evie, and that he is now doing what he should have done years ago and protect Evie. Evie has apologized several times as she feels she's the reason my relationship has ended, but I've reassured her that the only person at fault here is Will, and I do not blame her for anything. If anything, she is a victim in all of this too. I've given her the ring, but she has said that I should give it back to mother-in-law as she doesn't want it. I wish I had seen Will's behavior before it got this far, but I was blinded by love. Looking back, 
I can see there were red flags that I just decided to ignore. Our late mom, 67, passed two years ago from a car accident. My brother, 32, had been staying with her for nearly a year due to him being not able to find a job. He's been in and out of her place for years. He would find a job, not be able to keep it for more than a few months, and move back in. I suspect alcohol and other issues, but my mom is very overprotective of him, and so I don't know the whole story. My sister, 42, and I, 36, both wanted to sell the house since the market was good and distribute the money equally between all of us. That means around $230,000 per person if it's sold at market price. But before that, we wanted to replace the flooring and repaint it. We both live hours away, so was going to hire a guy. My brother refused to let him enter and also refused to let us sell by essentially squatting there. We didn't really know what to do because he refused to move and wanted us to let him live there for free until he got a job. We agreed for three months he could stay there for free, but he never found a job. Or maybe he did and just didn't tell us. We waited another three months before deciding we had to kick him out somehow. We tried to visit once, and he barred us from entering, saying we didn't tell him early enough we were coming, even though we told him two days ago. We agreed to offer him 10% more of the inheritance than his share if he left. I was pretty sure he would take it, since he was broke. Nope. He refused to move, saying he had nowhere to move to, and we should just let him stay and he would take care of the place for us. Finally, we decided to talk to a lawyer, and he said we had to give a formal eviction notice. So we went that route, and it took eight months. He also painted the rooms black, and we paid a lot of money for painters to restore the original color. We got a pretty good sale for it, and gave him his amount. I still get random calls from him yelling that we ruined his life. I'm done with him, and frankly disgusted he refused to leave on his own. But am I the a-hole? Well, I think OP did nothing wrong. In fact, she was very nice giving him time and compromising, so she definitely shouldn't feel bad. At the end, it's two against one, as OP's sister wanted to sell the house as well, and OP's brother needs to get his life together. Let's hear the community's opinion. Kronk Swarda says, Lawyer was the best route. Block his calls and emails, not the a-hole. Frask442751 says, Not the a-hole. Unfortunately, there really was no other action you could have taken that would have made him happy, besides just giving him the house he didn't deserve. Wrangle Light says, You're nicer than me. I would have deducted the painter's fees, plus any change to the renovation quotes from his share, not the a-hole. I'm a retired man living on pension and disability in Georgia in the U.S. Last year, I was introduced to my 17-year-old daughter's friend's mother. We hit it off and started dating. Time goes on. She tells me she is laid off from her job, so I offer to let her move in. She moves in and starts taking me to my doctor's appointments, making meals, cleaning the house, and we get along great. I fell head over heels for her. As I am about to renew my lease, her adult daughter has a huge fight with her boyfriend and they break up. We move her daughter in with us and decide to end the lease and rent a larger house with room for all four of us. She starts talking about getting married, but we've only been together for a few months. Still, it has been going great. So I buy her a nice ring. We get engaged with an understanding that we will wait at least one year to get married after we live together first. The four of us move into the new house with an understanding that her daughter will need to either go to school or pay rent in the new house while my daughter finishes her senior year of high school. She starts using S to try to convince me not to make her or her daughter get jobs. When I insist that her daughter must pay rent, she starts disappearing and going outside to take phone calls. On Friday, June 30th, just four weeks after we moved into the house, my daughter catches my fiancé on a date with her ex-boyfriend at a local cafe. She refuses to talk about it when she gets home, saying only that she was talking to him so that they would have closure, but that maybe she needs some time to think. The next day, several of her friends show up with trucks and move her and the daughter out of the house along with all their stuff. I demand the ring back, and she says she will give it to me but leaves with it. She later emails me and said she will still return the ring, just give her time to move first. My daughter and I have inventoried what they left only to find that they took many things that belong to us. Books, tools, electronics, etc. In total, we're talking only a few hundred dollars worth of items. But she also left her legal records here, divorce papers, tax returns, medical records, etc. There was also a lot of confusion over things we thought were taken that turned up later. By the end of that week, her Facebook profile was her and her ex. She had moved in with him. 
She refused to communicate with me or give me any explanation. I reached out to her, her friends, and her family several times, trying to get an explanation and to demand the ring be returned. Finally, I heard back last night via email. She said she sold the ring for $500 and that if I kept trying to contact her, she would call the police and charge me with stalking. It is clear now that I was just a meal ticket for her and her daughter. When she couldn't control the situation with S, she took what she could and bailed. I'm heartbroken. More than anything, I'm angry. My daughter says I should take her to magistrate court and sue her for the value of the ring, $2,500. But I'm not even sure how I would collect, even if I received a judgment. Should I take all the emails and receipts and sue her in court? Or should I just start the healing process now and accept that I was conned? $2,500 is nothing to sneeze at. If it were just a few hundred bucks, I'd say move on and cut your losses. But at $2,500, suing her might be worth it. You will likely win because engagement rings are considered conditional gifts in a lot of places. I'm no lawyer, so don't take that as legal advice. Either way, sounds like you dodged a bullet. No Way Jose Today says, In many jurisdictions, a wedding or engagement ring is a conditional gift. And if the condition of marriage isn't fulfilled, you are entitled to it back. You need to call a local lawyer, ask if this rule applies in your state, and probably file in small claims. Discuss with the lawyer the cost versus reward, and decide if hiring an attorney is an option. It probably isn't. You could garnish her wages post-judgment with the right forms. Chance Complaint 163 says, From some brief research, it appears it is a conditional gift in the state of Georgia. It is very likely that the ring should have been returned to you, and she should not have sold it. If you Google Georgia engagement ring gift, there are some firms that have that on their site. You should get a consultation and get their opinion on if you have a valid claim. 